will collectively welcome you to the 1775 Whiskey Passport coming live to you from sunny Scotland, centre of the universe, which obviously we have aka Tati Peel, Neil Forbes, we have Jay-Z, Nanu, Nanu, and we've also got Scott Watson who is stepping in for myself this evening, who will be giving us some excellent for fullful knowledge. And of course, collectively, what are we all doing, folks? We are making the whiskey world a smaller place. So hello and welcome. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Anyway, Here's some big boost to Phil Graham. I can't do that for you. I'll try my best, though. Aye. We, we thought we couldn't get anybody. We thought we couldn't get anybody uglier than you, Graham, but we've got Scott on the board now. You know? <laughs> So we're, we're, we're really scraping the barrel, or is it the cask we call it nowadays? The cask. <laughs> the cask. Aye. Just, okay. uh, just before uh, we let you all get rock and roll in the night, I've got a few special requests to put out. There's a few birthdays on uh, watching in tonight. Down in London, we've got Mimi, who's Paulo's friend. He's got his whiskies for tonight down there in the big smoke. So a uh, happy birthday to him. And of course, up the back there, hiding away, we've got Darren. It's his birthday as well. So uh, happy birthday to all the boys and girls that are dialing in tonight. I'll try and get onto the Facebook to see what uh, everybody's saying. Hopefully. The usual suspects have dialed in, and we can see if we can have some interaction. But uh, what have we got in store tonight, Tatty Peel? What exciting oh, stuff? Oh, some great stuff. And Scott's an expert on the casks, so we're going to have a wee chat maybe later on about the, the cast and the maturation process. If it's, yeah, that's Scott's business, so it's really good to have him on board. But we've got the Glenlivet uh, Nadura, first fill, um, is whiskey to start with. Then we're going to Glenfiddich, a couple of space eyes to start. Um, it's a uh, reserve cask. Glen Fiddick, then we're going to finish with a Glen Turret 2020, a brand new uh, peated version from Glen Turret. And if you remember the introduction, um, what do you call it? There, I've, I've stammered the night, I'm missing you, Blakey. <laughs> it's a French company, <laughs> a crystal Just company. Now. And Just a couple of weeks ago, we did the introduction uh, video for tonight. We actually we commented on the bottle, it's a fantastic bottle. So I'm hoping the whiskey at the end of it is, is good, is what the bottle looks from there. So, Scott. And I think the first thing we should do is have a wee chat with you yes. about what you do, because the, the great mysteries of single malt, malt whiskey making, I think, <laughs> the is the maturation. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, but when I do uh, my, my whiskey tours and such things, uh, the, the stated fact is that 75% of the flavour, colour and character comes from the maturation. Should uh, do. And all the colour should come from maturation, yeah. or the fake tan is Graham <laughs> uh, refers to something. So, yeah, it, it's maybe just... Fake tan, apples, just fake tan, Mr. Blakey. So maybe just, just a couple, a couple we're not even getting pieces in bloody Tenerife tonight. <laughs> so, yeah, just, just tell us a wee bit about uh, how the impact of the maturation does, because it's easy to say 75% uh, of the colour, flavour and character comes from the maturation, yeah. but you, you import casks from all over the world. And just from Australia. Like, just from Australia. Yeah, okay. just from Australia. So yeah, it's I one think it's interesting. Australia bring in. So uh, the main thing to remember is that about 95% of the whiskey barrels casks that are stored in Scotland are all bourbon casks. And that goes back to kind of prohibition days, 1920s about then, um, when there was a massive overflow, whiskey needed vessels um, across this country to fill, so they brought them all across. Prior to that, it was majority wine casks from all over the world that was used, so whiskey got put in anything. The main thing to remember that whiskey is only whiskey if it's inside an oak cask. SWA rules, so the Scotch Whiskey Association will say it needs to be oak, unless you're in Ireland they can have different things. So what I do is um, I bring in wine casks from Australia, um, a para, which is sherry, port casks, uh, various other kind of wine casks as well, but we offer provenance, so a big thing for distilleries nowadays is to have where's my cask from, what forest my oak from, because obviously with a lot of um, copies and fakes in the market, yeah. People want to know where their casks come <clears> from. So I'm quite different, whereas 95% bourbon casks brought into the country is a very, very small market. But when you think the rest of the 5% out of 20 million casks, 20 to 22 million casks a year sit in Scotland, that's four casks per person. Can you imagine that? Each person in this whole country has got four casks of whiskey sitting there, equivalent of. So that's what I do. I bring in different types of uh, casks uh, to play about with experiment because it's not really a big thing. Um, and we're hoping to push it that way because wine casks give a lovely influence to whiskey, but I'm biased. 
<laughs> I know, I, I agree with you. I, I think sometimes I, I like the share of maturity. And mm-hmm. It's got tunes in every Friday anyway, when we're, we're online. And you know, my, like my the thoughts for the, the, the share of bombs. Bomb. Yeah, I, I just think that sharpness, that sweet, nutty yeah. sort of flavours coming through is, is fantastic. In fact, Scott gave me a wee a taste of gin there the other day. I think it was quite an interesting one. I think we'll just cover that. Uh, you tell tell the folk about that, uh, Scott. Well, can you see that, actually, Mr. Blake? Will I get closer to the camera? Can yeah. you see the colour? It's pink. Yes. Yeah. So this is a gin that I've been. Well, it's a distillery up north I'm working with, and that's uh, the release mm. coming out. It's out now, actually. It's Canara Distilleries. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon cask. So it's a pink gin, but it's not fake tan, fake colouring. That is all from the wine that was inside the cask. And the gin, which is obviously a clear spirit, goes in. That's in March they filled that cask, and this is the product. So not only the colour comes out of it, it's the flavour as well. So what we've got behind that is um, lots of summer fruits, lots of raspberries. It's a massive influence on the spirit. So that's one direction we're going with with the cask as well. It's not just for whiskey. It could be for a lot of different things. But that's a prime example of cask influence and how a clear spirit, which all new make spirit is, when it comes off the stills, it's all clear. Um, and that's what that does. That's only six months. So that's a good example of what kind of cask influence. Yeah, I think that's what I want to show that, Scott. Yeah. It just shows you normally you get a pink gin. It's done by the, the botanics, isn't it? Botanics and maybe a little bit of dye in there. Aye, well, aye. Maybe. But uh, this, this one here, it's a darker than the standard pink gin. Yeah. Really sort of rich colour, ruby colour almost. And that's just come from the maturation, just purely Pure off the maturation. cask. So that, that's how it influences on, on Friskin, I think. Uh, Glendronic 18 is one that we've, we've tasted and we really enjoy as well as the Dal Ewan, mm-hmm. which is, uh, they always say 95% Scotch whisky is matured in an oak cask at some point, but the other 5% is usually that sherry, and it's just yeah. like looking at cold tea, but just the flavours are just absolutely amazing. So, anyway, we're going to try our first whisky of the day, and it's the Glen That's Levitt. why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually here for a dram. <laughs> uh, the Glen Levitt's owned by uh, Pernod Ricard. It's, it's an old, old favourite. I think it's 1824, 1825 uh, distillery. It's at Ballon in, in Speyside. It's a lovely distillery. It's a nice distillery and it's a nice drama whisky as well. So the one we've selected today is quite an unusual expression. It's an Adura, uh, which is uh, the Gaelic definition is natural. So it's basically, it's natural. And it's first filled cask, if I remember correctly, uh, when I read up on it earlier on. It's a... Uh, 60.3% alcohol by Ooh. volume, and it actually has a... <laughs> you can't get any, Graham. <laughs> and it's a 60.3 cash strain. Well, oh, oh, has he got it's something? Oh, no, he's taking the rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that, I'm that, uh, I know Neil's that tight fisted, I thought I better buy them myself. <laughs> how, how do you get them through customs? Are they, they, they security? <laughs> you got jailed if you told me, not me. Right, it's, it's a first fill anyway. It says it's a, a slight peak, but I think the peak comes through as a wee bit nuttiness. If I had a wee nose of it earlier on, they're just at the bottle. So we're going to have a try this one. It's one I've never heard of before, but as we say, we're always trying new expressions, and that's the whole idea of being a member of 1775 Whiskey Passport. It's all about trying new things, getting your 50 mils. Bottles, it's up to 50, 60, 70 pounds. You probably wouldn't know because you didn't get them in supermarkets. A lot of the expressions were fear. It, it, you know, yeah. we, we get them in, we do a lot of research to find them, and so we can try different whiskies and understand. And as you know, some of them are really of uh, traditional distilleries, i.e., i.e., all three here uh, today are, are well known distilleries, but all three are pretty rare expressions that not most people would be fully aware of. I think from a consumer point of view, obviously I'm a, a member of the, the Passport Club as well, but for me, I don't have money to go spend 60, 70 pounds on a bottle of whiskey every time I fancy a taste of something. So being part of the club and doing the tastings every Friday, I've got a massive collection now. I've got lots of tasting notes behind it, and it's cost me very little. If I was to buy a bottle of each of that, I'd be tens, tens of thousands of pounds for what we get every week on that one's fantastic. And obviously... Um, Graham and, and Tatty Peel here do a great job in selecting it, but if you've got a favourite out there you want to try, I'm sure the guys wouldn't be adverse to a little bit of a, a kind of prod every now and again. If you, there's things you fancy or you can get, you can't, you want to taste, but you don't want to pay a hundred pound for a bottle or fifty pound a bottle. Let the boys know. I'm sure they go and find it for you. Yeah, we'll we'll spend hundred pound. <laughs> Graham, he's more miserable than you told me it was. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm getting near my retirement age, remember. <laughs> Just say before you dial in, just a warm welcome to some of the guys. We've got Jamie Thorne up there in Pennycook, Jeremy Blackwood. We've got Brian Johnston kicking about there. There's a few other comments I'm trying to get a, a hold of, but uh, they're bouncing. Susan Ennis is there as per normal, but uh, I want you to say hello anyway. So you guys crack on. Right. Let me try this whiskey. Right, again, he's, <laughs> he's a thousand, fifteen hundred miles away from me. He still bloody hugs me up. I didn't get better. I feel like I'm I can't believe what we were saying beforehand. Anyway, yeah, it's an Adura. You look at the colour, we always say um, the, the, the colour's key to it, and it's a really, really light. And, and, and Scott, it's maybe something you can enlighten folk about as well. It's when they talk about first fill, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the cast, you know, and you get the, the triple cast and the, the colour, 75% of the colour flavour and, and character comes from the, the maturation, but 100% of the colour if it's double yeah. fake tan. It comes from that. So, you know, because an interesting one is... No the, fake tan! <laughs> There's no fake tan in that. The interesting one, yeah, absolutely. The interesting <laughs> one for me is, is the virgin oak, because it's, yep. it's, it's not very well burnt, obviously. Yep. You know? So yeah. it's going to be lightly charred, that yep. one. So virgin oak eh, casks, or obviously, as it says in the tin, it's an oak cask um, that would have either a char or a toast. There's different variations in it. So you can get an alligator char, which is basically put on fire and left for a long time. Lots of charcoal. And you can get a light char or a light toast, which is basically... A heat for a little while it doesn't do much to the wood but you need that part there because it does give color but virgin oak you won't get much kind of color out of the oak itself but you get a hell of a lot of flavor out of it yeah. especially a virgin oak cask and you can actually get that i think yeah the, the one we, we had before was the balvenie yeah american oak and uh, i think it was actually dr bill lumsden and his expertise was talking about that as well yeah. because i always talk about in general terms your, your, your maturation gives you your colour and it gives yep. you your nose and such things so you've got a head start and to, to open your mind but now they're being so sleek it about it for a moment about it I mean virgin oak in terms of there's lots of when they, they'll do a vatten on it it might be like four virgin oak casks one sherry cask two bourbon casks when it comes through because if it's just pure virgin oak it'll be too much for it you have too much tannin in behind it it'll be very cloy on your palate mm -hmm. so you'll probably find that's been taken out of the cask at some point and then uh, re-wrapped and put into something else well that's the joys of oak and cask right, yeah. it's, there's a billion and one possibilities what you can do in Scott, different yes I've got a question you, Ask away, Mr. Blakey. Hey, how many times should you use a cask for, for putting whiskey in? Is there like a minimum, a maximum, or do you have to sort of scrape it back again? What, what's your thoughts? So you'll probably, you can repurpose casks. So a typical bourbon cask, for example, which I said before, 95% casks in this country are bourbon casks. Um, they're about 22 mils thick in the stave. So once you um, say it's been in 10 years, it's a blend limit, it's been up in the dunnage or the warehouse, whatever, um, that'll get emptied and put into a blend. The cooperage will take it back uh, and they'll look at it in terms of cast quality, um, but they will have to basically do like they'll strip it and then rechar it again. And they're technically going back to a virgin oak cask on that one, but bourbon is obviously quite high percentage in alcohol, so it penetrates the oak quite far in. So you can maybe use a cast three or four times possibly. If you're looking for a neutral vessel for a lot, which you can you can do a lot of kind of larger distillers that produce a hell of a lot of alcohol and need a lot of casts, so you can do that. Um, but in, in terms of uses, I would say three, four, four max. Cast going back to the 60s, is somebody still kicking about? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I remember when they worked at Gwen Kinchy, some of the guys came down from Mortlach and they were actually doing graduate work on the wood, on the maturation process. So yeah. they're, they're just taking it to the next level. And I think for the future in this case, it's just going to be... The geeky science. Yes, yeah, like the science of the wood, yeah. Whereas before it was a, always the mystery, as I said earlier on, it really was a mystery at how the colour came about and all that sort of thing. But now these guys are just so switched on with it and yeah. they can make what wonder sort of thing. But anyway, back to the whiskey, it's, it's great. But look at the, the, look at the colour. You can see this is really, really straw colour, really, really clear. So again, right away, have a look at the legs, Scott. You look at the legs. Oh, we like the legs. Oh, I like the legs. Like the legs. I can't see them today. Mine are, mine are <laughs> gone. Yeah, they're gone. They're just they're non-existent. Very quick. Just fade away. So it's really, really light and delicate. And is it, Scott is Graham left you? You say the flavour map? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> 
It, it says. My food on that boat for years. Yeah, we've got it. I've got it, it here. here. It, it here says, go. Peter, Where is it in the flavour map? It, it says there's a wee bit of peat in it, but I, I, I don't get any peat on the nose right away at all. I get pear drops straight yeah, off. Well, that's just what, yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I would something say, right. <laughs> he's been reading up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's a way way down here, light, delicate. Uh, it reminds me of the Glen Lossy, the the, the, the Azure Flor and mm. Fauna one we've had. Uh, so right away you get the. the I've got yeah, it. We've got it here, so it's bottom left, way down here. Really, really, it, it claims peat, but it's not peat. It, it comes as a. It's hard to say what that is. You get it in the taste, but, but, but it's not in the Yes, yeah, there's a lot of vanilla, citrus, you get lemon, mm. lemon zest, or that sort of thing. Interestingly enough, a wee bit coconut, and I, I find you get that, Glenn Lossy, when you get way, way down into this light, delicate, you get a wee bit coconut coming through in that. Berries, raspberry. Any apples? Mm. No, no, no apples, apples. No green apples. No green apples. So we've got a wee taste. There's quite, there's quite a lot of fruit in that. Different fruits. Ooh, it's definitely sixty percent. That's for sure. Slams. That's beautiful. It's quite fiery, obviously, because it's sixty percent. Yep. Very. Quite long in the finish, actually. Yeah, but I think long. it's just the, the, because the of the alcohol. It's in yeah, it. yeah, the alcohol is in it. I'm getting a bit of the apples now. I'm getting green yep. apples, Graham. Green Ooh, apples. Green apples. Green apples. <laughs> the, the zest of the citrus, a real, yep. almost like yeah, a lemon sherbet. For yep. me, you can get it in the back of your tongue yep. off that one. And definitely the pear drops. Pears. Yeah, yeah you're getting a lot of pear coming through that. Uh, quite buttery, a wee bit salty. Getting the salt. And the palate, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a actually, multitude. It's a very complex, isn't it? it? And I don't think it'll be a very old whiskey, to be honest it's with young, you. you can, I, yeah. From the, from the little knowledge I have, I can definitely tell, A, the legs, I think, can yeah. give that away yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, and also, it's quite thin, um, yeah. but it's fiery, um, but it's got it's packing a lot of flavour in it. A lot, Very yeah, complex for a young whiskey. Yeah, it certainly is a young whiskey. The, the, the legs are, are one of the great ones as well, yeah. And the colour. Yeah. You know, basically, the colour as well, because it's in and out, basically. I mean, probably, I wouldn't suspect any more than seven, eight-year-old. Yeah, um, I would agree. But yeah, it's it, it, is, it is intense shall I say, on the, the, the palate to start with. Put a touch of water in, back to the nose. It certainly softens it. That actually brings a wee bit of banana into that. And my nose now has got more water in it. It's a bit raspberry, I get that. But the banana. Yep, yeah. I get that. Definitely get the coconut. And I think that could be from, is it the fennels, I think, in the distillery? In the distilling process, mm. you get a banana out of it. Yeah. yeah. Vanilla, definitely. A wee bit of spices, cloves. Yeah. Go through. It's got a lot really, going it's on got a lot for it. For, for, Hey, let's see the dude. That is. Ah, with the water, what a difference. It needed that, didn't it? Yeah. It needed that. Um, as you know, I like the sherry. You can put that down the Scott, you're all right, that's. I can see the pain in his left arm. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling the burn. <laughs> it was a look you were giving me there. <laughs> Can I put it down here? Sorry. Look at the next one. Graham just throws it away. Hang on, it's away from him and point there. I'll, I'll look after your place for you, Graham. Don't worry. <laughs> but, no, I usually look after me. Guys, can I just say that uh, to Mike LaRue styled in from Canada. Hi, Mike. And then we've also got uh, Donald Ross in for the first time. And then Moreland. He likes the thin legs, unlike your legs, Neil. Aye. Because Brian Johnston's all excited at the green apples. I thought Brian, I thought Brian was getting excited in my legs. Yeah, I spoke to Moreland earlier on because we'll not blame Gregor's, but Gregor put the wrong date on. Moreland thought he was, uh, when he got his email to say, for the reminder for the tasting tonight, um, he thought it was the 20th. So I phoned him up to apologise and explain <laughs> what, what I'd went wrong there. So I'm sorry, Moreland, that we're actually forcing you we're forcing you to drink whiskey tonight, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm, shame, sure, I'm sure you'll survive it. <laughs> and it was, it was really nice to speak to you on the phone earlier on there, so absolute pleasure. That's but, an absolute but, tacker, that one. Yeah. It, it, for a starter whiskey, normally we go sort of shorter finish, but the, the, the finish on this is, is quite long. Yeah. But it, it, it's only at the, the front, and the pear, the sweetness, the citrus, the, the, the lemon zest, it's banana, lots coming through that, and it's all fruit. Yeah. A wee bit spices, yeah. cloves, spices. But I get that. Yeah. Uh, to me, I think it's obviously with American white oak casts, it's not been in bourbon, hence why we're back to colour and influence. That's why it's that straw colour. So I think the tannins or the, the oak can be quite clawed. So I think this has been very, very quickly, and that's why I think it's so young. 
but for such a young whiskey, it's really complex. It mm -hmm. really is. It's good. It's got a lot going for it. That one. I think the, the Glenlivet is good like that. You know. Yeah. The, the standard whiskies are, are for the want a better friend, free sort of basic whiskies. But I think the some of the, the complexity in, in the the expressions and yeah. they're differently reserve cask etc that is just when, when you know, you've got a stock like they do and you've got the joy of yeah. going around and nosing and tasting different yeah. casks and you've got maybe a dunnage that's got maybe two thousand casks sitting there and some happy chap has got to go and take samples from each of them you come across a few crackers like that and that's where it comes from it's and mm -hmm. um, you can sit in dunnage for three years one day obviously that's when it becomes a whiskey that's the minimum and um, right up to 60 years plus you see that macau and others and those casks are still sitting about and somebody's got that amazing job of walking about. Well, it was funny. I, I, I it was uh, Ramsey Borthwick, who's the, the, the senior state manager at Glen Kinchy, uh, and we remember having a conversation with Ramsey about that, about the age of whiskey, yeah. and because of the the, the drop in the alcohol by volume as yeah. it matures. Uh -huh. There is a shelf life, and they reckon it's probably fifty to sixty years absolute maximum. Yeah, uh, because age. Imagine that in a sherry cask. Oh, that would be fantastic. Uh, but yeah, the, the alcohol boot the volume. And I, I, I believe, and I'm very cynical, uh, is the people who know me, is <laughs> this is where all these expressions are coming from. The age statement is disappearing because when they're, they're, they're doing that, if the alcohol boot volume, I do the, the master classes yeah. uh, with Americans and, and tell them that basically once it goes under 40% alcohol boot volume, it can't be called a whiskey. Yeah. So what do we do with it? It's 40 year old, 50 year old, we throw it out? No. Just top it up with younger whiskey yeah. and sell it as not an Adura because that's a, a first something like a reserve cask. Sell it for thirty percent more. Yeah, uh, and great marketing, but great whiskey though. Something yeah, different. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's a billion and one, and that's a billion and two. Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, I, Scott oh. should give him the seal, the seal approval. For me, it is the seal approval. <laughs> I'm only joking. I really want. Callum T styled in, and Donna Ross is saying thank you. And Morlin's happy. He now understands, and he's going to forgive you, Daddy Peel. Oh, thank God! <laughs> uh, I was panicking. I didn't sleep last night after the Scotland victory. Uh, I had maybe one or two friskies too many last night. Is the guys on the Zoom call at seven o'clock will testify? <laughs> I could hardly speak at seven o'clock this morning, uh, and I was going to have to go on a night in the drink and no sleep the night again. So we've but, not mentioned football once. We've done well so far. I know, far. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best, but, <laughs> but we'll, we'll have a wee chat later on about it. We're just about to go on the second one. We're, we're now. We're, 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 Use a bar from talking. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the, the, the director's dram, we've only got two this week. Graham's I got a free hand off the stock, so I've got a 36, 36 pound a dram. <laughs> uh, the first one we're going to do is a Dalpony. It's a Dalpony uh, Distiller's Edition 1995. So that looks really nice. Look at the colour of that. Nice and rich, dark. So it's a double matured. Doesn't say what it's matured in. But it'll be a nice wee sherry there. So a lovely colour on that. Dalpony. Distillers edition is number one. Oh, we've got our own fr old friend David Brown's old distillery, Crabby's. A, crab a Crabby's 15 year old is number two. We've only got two of the day because we forgot about it till about 25 past eight. That's the main reason. <laughs> but hey ho. We'll blame Alan. We'll blame Alan. So, number one is Dolphin Distillers edition. Number two, Crabby's 15. You tell us what you want, Scott and I, to taste. I'm quite happy tasting the end of them. But I think my favourite. Ex stock, ex stock, it's gone. <laughs> Did you check what was there before you left? Or just, just asking. I should have done a stock date, leaving us in here when it's all shut down. <laughs> number two, number two this evening is a Glenfiddich. It's a reserve cask. Uh, I just described as a rich single malt. It's forty percent alcohol by volume, so we're coming back. But again. I just love the colours of these sort of things. So, um, let's have a wee Ryan nose. Ryan Johnston's it. wanted the Dolwini, so <laughs> let's get up to number two. Right. <laughs> we'll see. Where are we? Right, the Glenfiddich Reserve Cast. Double matured. Again, the colour. Uh, and I think Glenfiddich do actually admit to putting fake tan in it, Graham. So, yeah, they put a wee bit, <laughs> a wee bit colour into that. But it, it's a lovely colour to it. Have a quick look at the legs. We like the legs. I like the legs. They're actually pretty slow there. Yeah, yeah a wee bit on the thick side. Older than that one. Yeah, absolutely. Before we put it onto the flavour map, we've really got to have a, a nose at it to ensure there's no smoke. 
we, we can know just with colour and, and by the legs, we can put it into the, the light and or rich side. Uh, but we've got to put it to the smoke out or the delicate. So we've got the three one mark. It's cut, please. It's, it's only going to stay for the bit. Uh, oh, yeah, I just, uh, you forgot about the last time. So there, there's no smoke there. A wee bit of colour. You're, you're just going to come off the halfway line here at this one and just be coming over. Uh, again, there's a lot of them just sit in this area. You know, there's, there's no no smoking it at all as far as I can say. So, and it's not coming to the light. So it sits on this halfway line, and that that's about my perfect area for whiskey. So I'm looking forward to to see that. You put it down in Scott. Watch Thank it. Thank you very much. <laughs> on the nose, quite unusual. Uh, it's obviously not been the share of that particular one because I got a bit of vanilla from that. I get toffee. You getting toffee? I get toffee. Yeah. Dry fruit. I'm getting the vanilla. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's out of the dry fruit, Christmas cake, Bonneville chocolate, dark chocolate. What about your Jamaican chocolate? No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fruit, a bit the dry fruit right enough. Raisins are coming through, but yeah. it's not like the rum and raisin grammar, the old Jamaica, but, but some of them are, get that richness. But the wee bit cloves, a bit spicy, yeah. the cloves again coming through. Really, really nice nose. Smooth, smooth nose. I don't think it's aged either, this one. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, I've got to say, guys, I'm at a disadvantage. I've got a horrible glass here, and it just shows you the importance of a Glencairn glass to get the the notes. Well, you didn't even. You, 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 up like you've you've taken your whiskies when you forgot to take a, a Glencairn out of stock. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I better leave them for you. <laughs> uh, on on the nose, absolutely wonderful, uh, and it's funny now the the. the, the, the Dry fruit. Yeah, I'm getting a wee bit of the the toffee caramel coming through now, but vanilla. I'm, yeah. I'm getting vanilla, so I, I would think it's not terribly long in the sherry. I always say that if it's just like a sherry finish. Yes, you, you still get that vanilla hint coming yeah. through. But if it's longer, it's in the sherry. That toffee caramel. That's it. That's, that's it, been in sherry cast for a long time. I think that you one. Think so? Yeah. I, I'm I'm not convinced no. of that because of the, the vanilla. So I'm it. getting because. Unless it's been kind of, as I say, it's a reserve, a reserve cask, I think. So mm. it's obviously one of those ones that's been sitting somewhere we talked about before. They yeah. go and find those crackers, but it's got that. I can almost smell how viscous it is yeah. with your nose in it, mm -hmm. with the smoothness. Yeah. Can we taste it now? Right. I think we should taste it there, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this is actually a, this, uh, what do you call it, a travel exclusive version, is it? Yeah. It, it was originally, yeah, but I, 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 you can buy it on, on, on like, oh, oh. Get chocolate now. Yeah, you get the chocolate right through that. Yeah. Almonds. Just going to say a quick hello to Lorraine and Derek Korski that I've dialed in as well. It, yeah, a lot spicier now, Scott. This is a, yep. lot, a lot spicier. Cinnamon, almost there, almost yeah. chili ish. Which takes yeah. the kind of point it's not been on a sherry cast for as long as I maybe think of. It's because the different yeah. flavours yeah. coming through. Yeah, it, it's. There's, there's a citrus here as well. Again, does that. Uh, again. Yep, sweeter citrus, more a lime, limes, a eh? yeah, I get the Rain, lime in it. Eh? But Christmas cake, yeah, nice, that's beautiful. That's yeah. it, that's a, a, a feet up by the log fire one. That one, yep, thank you, you very much. Attention. See, look, Blakey, I get water done for me. Look, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it does, it does, <laughs> it does most of the time. He just yes. moans about <laughs> Scott, he, he, he didn't kind of happy what goes on for you. <laughs> but back to, back to the nose. It really softens the nose, it softens does. it perfectly, yeah. So that's about 40, so it's almost yeah. been kind of... Yeah, caramel's really there, the, the dark chocolate, Christmas cake. I, I, again, on the nose, you know, on the, the palate, the, the spices are sharp. Sort of cinnamon, sort of chilli, nutmeg. What a difference. Yeah, with I, that. I, I think it'll be good. Glenfiddich's like that, I think, mm. yeah. Uh, but just with a touch of water on the nose. So I'm going back to the caramel and the fruit and that. It's just, oh, that's stunning. Massive difference of water. There's no vanilla in it, the water. Yeah. yeah. It, it's caramel. Is that caramel? Chocolate just caramel. Yeah. Salted popcorn. I was going to say galaxy caramel. <laughs> Not the salted oh, one. That's lovely. But it really, Christmas cake. There's a spicy, there's nutty almonds. Whoa. It, that is, yeah, absolute seal Beautiful. approval. Really nice whiskey. <laughs> 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 Like knew that was yeah. coming. Reserve cask. It doesn't tell us what the reserve cask, cask is, but it's interesting having Scott here to, uh, today, you know, because he knows a bit more on the cask than I do. That's one of the mysteries of it. Um, and, yeah, if it's some of these old, old cask lying about with some reserve wine. Possibly could be. And that's the thing. It's, the, the blenders I'll never know. So, I'll say, I'll see a look at Gary Haggart, my cousin, who's on. He's on tonight. 
Um, he is my mentor. He's the distillery manager at Lunders Abbey. He's been in the, the trade for a long, long time. He knows his stuff and he's taught me pretty much everything I know about oak and about whiskey. Um, and maybe he can tell us in terms of a, a reserve cask. What is a reserve cask, Gary? Because in my head, I've got, it's basically a cask that the guys have been out tasting and um, taking samples and went, that's a good one. I want to keep that one for special, a special release or keep that back for something else because obviously they're all different. So if Gary can let us know on the Facebook chat there, um, what is your definition of it? That's cask? interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely interesting, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, interesting to hear your thoughts on that. But the, the cynic in me just says it's just a name. It's a name. The reserve cask. Aye, you know, it'll just be, there'll it's be an a, old unit. There'll be a few people that know what it is. Aye. But it's, it's not me. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and, and, and to be honest with you, I, I, I think from the level we're at, do you really need to know? No. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's Does if you're it enjoying taste it, nice? Yeah. yeah it, I it. think if you get enough from the cask, to say it's got to give you a specific flavour. Yeah. And again, when I do these master classes, this is what we, we try and tell them. You know, nosing whiskey is very subjective, closed mind. But when you actually can see the colour, you can identify the cast. You can tell if it's going to be vanilla, caramel, spicy, nutty, whatever the case may be. So it helps you open your mind a wee bit from there. But have we got any votes in, Gregor, so far for the yes. Dalwhinnie? Brian Johnson is looking for the Dalwhinnie. Uh, the first one, number one, the distiller's edition, or the Krabby. The Krabby is 15-year-old. For the second one, I think Dalwhinnie's five or Dalwhinnie. Dalwhinnie's way ahead. I'm not going to argue with that. Dalwhinnie's the cheapest one. You, you, you're the one to vote, Blakey. <laughs> you're too far away to even think about aye, that. Aye. It's funny, actually, I wanted to try the cabbies, but uh, I've not tried it yet. Darren had a wee nose and had a nip of it a couple of weeks ago before we shut up again. Well, so, there's only about a third of a bottle left. So I guess Darren's <laughs> been a mere wee nose yet. <laughs> All right, Darren, tell you somewhere. He's lying asleep, <laughs> dog tie, he's on his Full of whiskey. So, right, number three, as I say, I, I just love this bottle. I, I think That's this bottle would be great to put a candle in or something like yeah. that. You, know? um, you wonder what the markup price is in it in terms hey, of. Hey, Daddy Peel, Daddy Peel. Yes. We're on number three. What comes before number three? The useless fact. Come on, what's the useless fact? Oh, we've got to get Scott to do the useless fact today. Some, right, some useless you. fact. Some useless fact on, I forgot to tell him that by the way, he's seen me. He's Talk about me. on the spot. <laughs> a useless fact on Australian wine casks. They're only ever, a red wine cask is only ever filled twice. With wine? With wine. After they've been filled twice, no more wine because you can't get the flavour out of the oak anymore. It's taken all the flavour because the alcohol content in wine in the Barossa Valley 13 to 15%, so it only penetrates the oak so much. Yeah, and you put whiskey in it. Yep. 62% right. goes so much deeper, drags more out. So there you go. But wine casks in Australia, oak casks as well, only used twice. Well, 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 done, well, well what would be with that is a perfect fact yes. because it took him half his route to mention whiskey. He was only talking about wine casks there. I did, but I got the whiskey <laughs> got <it> eventually. <laughs> <laughs> well remembered, Graham. That's why we've been Graham and you've been sitting in Tenerife. Exactly. Because... See, 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 just a few wee ones. Ian Young's tuned in. Brian Turner's wanted to win. He's saying for that. Julie Johnston's saying hello there. Susie Ennis is so much better with water. And Jamie Thorne says number two is a winner so far. I agree yeah. with Jamie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, again, just going back to the bottle of the Glen Turret uh, before we're interrupting the game with Mr. Blakey Scott. You know, he's, he's getting an edge for talking too much. One and, and a half he's thousand sure. miles of that, <laughs> Whose idea was it to put in chat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a great bottle. As, as you were talking about the markup there, uh, yeah, the markup must be colossal. Well, oh. we know it is. It's all duty. And if they put an investment into the glass, you know, it, for the. the Export market. I think people yeah, will buy that just possibly. for the cosmetics of the, the bottle as opposed to the, the, the content. Yeah. So it's a, a 2020. It's a, a new expression from them. And as most of you know, Glen Turret uh, is still reputed to be the oldest continuation continued distillery in Scotland, 1775, where we took her name from. But however, did you know it's what it was no, actually... No, they took their name from us. Well, <laughs> they were slightly before us, Graham. You were a boy then. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it's a classic law, you know, it only gets recognised from 1775. It was early in the 1760s uh, it, it started to trade, but in these days it was all uh, illicit stills and that sort of thing, you know, the, 
was it 17, the 17? So there, where it came yeah, from, yeah, yeah, 17, 17. After that, to the unions when London started to tax whiskey, everyone went sort of for a hundred years more. Uh, as the uh, illicit stills until they were caught. Uh, Glen Kinchy was the same. Glen Kinchy was 12 years uh, as an illicit distillery until it was caught and paid taxes in 1837 instead of 1825. But, uh, you know, so Glen is the same. I don't know much about Glen Turret distillery. I don't, it used to be owned by Edrington. It's now owned well, by, I think. For you, Neil. Right, go on then. Neil, you know who the master blender of uh, Glen Turret is now? No. No. It was the, the master blender from McCallum has moved over and he started there. Oh, right. So right, it might right. still be Eddington then. Right. Well, no, Eddington sold it off because they shut down the, it was, a, it was a, the, the famous Gauss experience yeah. and they shut that down. Lalique yeah. something, Lalique is a French yeah. crystal glass company. Yeah. Um, so th this is a peat expression again, and this is why we always go about the flavour map as opposed to the regions. It's a... Uh, Quick nose, it's it's not heavily peated, but there's a, a bit oh, peat into it. There's quite a sweetness of that actually. Um, so we'll, we'll have a quick I'll put down the now, Scott. We've had it too long. I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, you're fine. Practice, oh, you, you've, if you've got strength now, um, don't, don't hurt your back. <laughs> you got a lawsuit so, coming on. <laughs> we, we look at the color first. The color's just it, it's it's mid, it's, it's a single maturation, I would say. It's, it's maybe a wee bit well charred um, bourbon. Just a wee bit of colour there. There's certainly no any sherry, I don't think. No. That. Uh, a quick look at the legs. Legs are actually quite light. You know what it reminds me of? I just I had a quick nose earlier on. Is remember the, the Anok Peat Hat we had a few weeks ago? Yes. Uh, from Speyside. Yeah. That yeah. was a beauty. So when Turret comes under a highland, uh, it's just outside Creef, uh, just up the north uh, or northwest of Perth, Glen Eagles, uh, sort of region. Legs are all over the place. Quick nose of it, you get the peat. Yeah. So I, I would say we're coming in somewhere just left of the centre line here, just lightly peated up into the, this area, Scott. I don't know, it's, it's certainly not no, peat. it's not yeah. a, a kind of um, hard burger or an Isla kind of yeah. optimal. Nice, 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 gentle. Yeah, but I think they do actually say it's <coughs> lightly peated as well, yeah. which is yeah. they're not going for the whole boom. But on, on the nose, though, you get the, the, the nuttiness of it, though. Yeah. Really yeah, nutty, nut. hazelnuts. Nuts, nuts, or hazelnuts. <laughs> nuts, nuts, or hazelnuts. <laughs> I got really nutty, isn't it? Mm, yeah, quite like coffee. Mm -hmm. A bit of coffee coming through that. The, 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 the peat's quite bizarre because I wouldn't call it peat, I would just call it smoky. It's, it, yeah, it's, just a, it's, it's a very light sort of ember, smoking it's ember. It's been very lightly kissed, that yeah, one. There's not yeah, much PPM yeah. in there. So yeah, it's, no, I think maybe 15, 20. No. I think maximum fifteen. Yeah, but actually very pleasant. Not not a lot going on with it. Coffee, a bit peaty, a bit smoky. Coffee, you know, you can almost like a coffee cake. Like, the sweetness like, you know, because through, it's yeah. quite buttery. Yeah. Uh, so you know, if you get the coffee cake, you get that sort of butter icing on the top sort of thing. It means me a bit of that. Walnut and coffee cake. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a good one. I like that one, Scott. See, Graham Blaker would never come away with that one there. Ah, that's uh, that's bang oh, That's nice. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Let's have a wee taste of it. Oh, There's that more is. taste with the peat yep. than the nose. The first thing it hits you is that the, a bit of the phenol is smoky. Yep, I sort of Scott. <laughs> but, but on, on the palate, actually, I would say maybe it would, would mm -hmm. go a bit further north into the smoky side, but yep. not, not a lot. It, really nice, and the coffee, really strong coffee coming yep. through there. Real nice, like a latte, actually. You know, quite a, I'm wondering if that's the peat influence that's dragging that part out. Yeah. I've <laughs> <laughs> got a question from uh, Donald Ross. He's asking why McCallum's a highland when it's across the road from Aberlour and it gets water from Speyside. I don't know if anybody knows that or if somebody needs to Google it and find out and be a smarty pants and tell us. I think that's it. Well, for me, it's a Google one. I always thought it was a Speyside. Yeah, he? McCallum's it's a Speyside. Yeah, I'm sure that's Speyside. Yeah. There's a wee map somewhere. Aye. Let's find the map. Where's the regions map? Have you got no, one? No, I've no good. I don't I'll find it. it. Yeah. I, I, my, my understand, McCallan. Uh, but again, it's very much in the, the, the region. Because um, the, the River Spey comes all the way down to Avonmore. Uh, just outside Avonmore. And what's the distillery? It's basically distillery. up to the A9. So, yeah. There we yeah. go. So yeah. your space sides along the Murray Coast, kind of down. Aye. What's well, kind of south down to the Braemar Road? Down the, the Braemar Road. 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 Basically, I think it's the A9 that looks like it separates. It looks on the map, it looks like it's the A9 that separates that. Actually, oh, wait a minute. 
Uh, we've got an answer. Even though McCarroll is... Ah, uh, here we go. There's always somebody... In the middle of the Speyside region, it's labelled as a Highland Malt. Well, there you go. So they've done that themselves, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, again, it's, it's got the qualifications of Speyside because it's a region. And it's uh, in the region. Uh, that, that's an interesting one. And I think that just reinforces what we we always talk about in, in Fisker Passport is ignore the regions. It yeah. means nothing. No. Yeah, absolutely nothing. So, good question, Graham. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. You're uh, welcome. Uh, be quiet and let us get this finished. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you get the nutty coming through with the water anyway. Yeah, the, the coffee at least it does that yeah. water does. Yeah, yeah. that's one thing I've noticed with doing tastings in the last kind of well, since April time with you guys in terms of using the water to kind of release the Roman. My knowledge before whiskey was very well, minimal, but to understand about tasting whiskey now and people's thoughts about oh don't add anything, don't put ice in it, don't put. A, Drink it how you like it, yeah, is the main thing for me. But I find when I'm tasting whiskey now that adding that few drops of water, the difference behind it, and I'd love to understand the science behind it. But we'll see your friend who was on with the water for the whiskey tasting yeah. last week. I understand understand now why it's so important that if you use tap water, for example, you've got your kind of chlorides and stuff in it, the chemical compounds, and that can maybe take a little away. So I like using a, a kind of a distilled water or using a, a bottled water, I think, makes a yeah. big difference. But yeah. it's it it interesting because I always encourage people to taste it with them. They give you, they shows you the benefits of the water. Mm -hmm. But when Bill, uh, Dr. Bill Lumsden is on with us, his tastings are just purely with water, and he takes ten drops of water. Yeah. About, you know, so everyone has their own ways of doing it. They're, again, yeah. there's no right, there's no wrong. No. But I'm always a believer, and I, I, I tell most of my people in the, in the master classes when people say you kind of take in in, in, in uh, whiskey, in particular water. Bloody made with water. It's the main ingredient of the damn thing. <laughs> you know, and what happens at the bottom stage, you get from 60% down to 30%. Water. Water. So, you know, to say you can't take water in it is just absolute nonsense. But go back back to the, the, the going to that is fantastic. It's beautiful. With, with the water. Yeah. Um, really, really, it, it's like just burnt embers, just a light smokiness. I'm getting more through. sweetness after the water. Yep, yep. Um, Coffee, definitely coffee, coffee cake, coffee and walnut was actually good because there is a, a nut in this. Sure. I think it's more hazelnuts, but I get you what you're saying with the nuts, walnut. Nuts, <laughs> yeah, I forgot it was there. Yeah, I <laughs> we went up quiet for a minute. We was having a good time. <laughs> but that certainly gets the seal approval. That that is that is absolutely lovely. Really, really stunning. nice. Yeah, absolutely it, it, And again, I think it's a. It'll be a particularly. Oh, it's a ten year old. Sorry, it's, it's ten year old. It's young -ish. I didn't realise it was it was age. So uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, order, I will tell you that is a real toughy. Uh, it's got a real toughy. I I would. Can I give you mine? Yeah, you go first. So I'm right with the Glen Fiddick on that one. I I I'm like you. I like I've got quite a sweet palate, so I like a sweet whiskey. So for me, two, and I'm surprised myself. I'm going for two, three, one. They're all nice, don't get I, me wrong. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I was the same. I, I thought the, the Glen Livet when we tasted it was going to be up there. Um, I've got to be exactly the same. Two, three, one uh, is, is my opinion. Well, but very, very, very nice. close. The, the, the Glen Fiddick uh, reserve cask was just uh, stunning with the water. Without, yeah, the without, water, without the water on its own, I thought it was a bit sort of fiery and a bit too much going on in it. 60.3%. Uh, so we can let that off for being fiery with it a bit of water. I know, I'm sorry, <laughs> the, the Glen Fiddick <laughs> even. That one, that's the 40, uh, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Absolutely great. So where are we with the director's dram? Well, before we go to the director's dram, just to say that I went one, three, two. Uh, I enjoyed the first one. I love this third one as well. And I went one, uh, one, three, two. So there's a curveball for you. Also, just to say, Dr. Briggs has dialed in from the United States as well. So hello to him. Um, I absolutely. see the comics coming in thick and fast there. Sheila Thorne's dialed in as well. Uh, Scott was supposed to check this, the comments, but he's got involved in the tasting. I'm sorry, now. I've been playing it me. I don't know how you multitask. You must be a woman. Because <laughs> he just talks rubbish. He doesn't think what he's saying, Scott. <laughs> right, is it the Dalpony then? Is it? Is that the winner? Dalpony Distillers Edition. I'm looking forward to this. And Blakey will be delighted. It's £15.30, 25 mils at the market bar and grill. Oh. Any, anywhere else in the country, it's £5 a, a dram. <laughs> That's going to be empty when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> Again, no funny. 
that is definitely a Highland. It's just off the A9. We were up there fairly recently when we were up filming up north. Uh, it's a nice That's distillery. Right. It's it's classed as uh, Scotland's highest distillery. Yep. Its highest point and it's uh, the, the uniqueness of the the, the heather round about it and the maturation. Uh, the 15 year old is quite sweet and you get that sort of floral yeah. honey, heather honey coming through it uh, just on the moors. <laughs> One and a half thousand bloody miles and he's still at I know. <laughs> <laughs> so have we look at the colour of that. The colour of that is fantastic. It really is. nice dark. Uh, it, it, it doesn't say it's, uh, it's sharing mature but it will be double. It is double mature. Yeah, it does say that. Sorry. I tell you a lie. Special release. So it's got the quick oh, look at the legs. Guess what's in this one? Aye. Guess what's in this one? Mr. Blakey, what do you think's in this one on the nose? Oh, okay, what's going? <laughs> green That's the one! It's, right it's away, absolutely yeah. banging right the green away. apples, this the, one. The, the, the legs are, are pretty medium, actually. They're, yeah. they're, they're quite thick coming away down there, but again, that's the share of maturation. it's quite old. Is it, is it, how old's that no, one? Is it any age in it? No, it's not aged. No. no. It's not aged. Oh, it's beautiful. Very uh, tropical and sweet on the nose. On, on the nose, yeah, green apples, absolutely. Green Get, apples. Getting a bit caramel coming through yep. it, toffee. Uh, Nuts. Uh, uh, uh. Almonds, actually. I'm getting a bit of almonds coming through that, Scott. I'm not there yet. Su surprisingly. I can't overtake the green apples and yeah. the kind of tropical kind of notes yeah, behind it. I'm yeah. just, I'm, after that, I get... Yeah. A bit salty, and a wee bit salt coming through there. The nice, nice caramel, rich dry fruit. There are a bit of raisins as well yeah, coming through dry fruit. Get that. A bit cakey, sort of cherry cake. Can I taste them? Yes, let's have a taste. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, this is the, one of the best nosing whiskies I've ever had, and I'm very tempted to see if it kind of matches up with the taste. Mm. Okay, first thing it's in the apples, but I. I, I think it's more a sweeter red apple now. Yeah. On on the palate, oh. as opposed to the green apple. That really upsets them. Yeah. Oh, you're right. getting that. You're getting the red apples now. Yeah. It, 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 the sweetness. <gasps> hey, lime. Apples. I'm getting a bit of the what, sort of lime, orange, or marmalade. You could actually mistake it for. Yeah, it's very um, fruity on the palate yeah. compared to it's dry fruit, those, raisins, though. currants, Christmas Ooh. cake. That's a bit of that one. It's it's actually very nice. Yeah. You bloody better choke on it at home. <laughs> <laughs> what if I dropped the bottle by mistake? I'll bloody drop you. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. Our, ta our, our taxes are booked to take us home tonight. We're here with the stock. <laughs> but, but back to the nose. Yeah, it, it really softens oh. it, smoothens it out. The, the green apple's still there on the nose, sharp. Raisins. Marmalade, it's definitely oh, orange, so it's a Seville marmalade sort yeah. of type. Yeah, really, really fruity, really rich and fruity is how I describe that. That's my first Albany, and that is beautiful. That's stunning. Yeah, the first thing I'm getting it, it, it marmalade and toast <laughs> coming through there. Christmas cake, as I've said, the raisins, the dried fruit. I, I, I'm actually getting a bit of berries in that as well. Sort of blackberries. What cast is it okay. doing? Is it sherry and it doesn't say. It doesn't say no. I love that. A little bit of mystery. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, yeah. I'm I'm getting a bit of berries from it. Sort of ripe fruity, really, yeah. really fruity. Caramel With toffee. The length in it, I think yeah. at the end I'm getting the kind of fruit coming through. That. And the longer it's on the finish, it's yep. a bit long finish. It gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Uh, it's a great one. It's Brian Johnson was you the one who started that. Whoever went for that one, it's great. The director's drama next week. Or two weeks' time, rather, is Dalpony Distillers Edition. Just almost ready to go, guys. Remember, membership for 1775 Whiskey Passport. We are actually going to be ordering the membership cards on Tuesday. But they need to get the 100. We're a wee bit short, but as we said in the last video, we'll take that wee hit. It's budget on 100. We're a wee bit short there. If you want to get into the membership, try and get it over the weekend. We can get everything away to the, the manufacturers to get a nice wee oak membership cards done for the end of the month. It should, I think it's a seven-day turnaround period from that. And remember, you get your Glenkey and glass, you get a 50 mils dram of whiskey. We'll all be planting you the oak tree on your behalf and the sustainability with the yeah. oak membership cards. We really about everything we're going to do is no waste. Everything's perfect from there. Next week, on the 20th, it's a members-exclusive uh, event on Zoom again. 
I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that yet, but we'll get the Zoom link out. We may have a wee dram. Does Blakey uh, have to come? Blakey, well, I, I don't have to send him the link. <laughs> uh, for, for, fortunately, he's going to be in Tenerife still, so I, I, it's up to me if I send him the link or no, oh, Scott. Oh, send him the wrong one. <laughs> I can send him that. Uh, but no, we'll, we'll do that and we'll have another chat. But we put the newsletter out last week as well, so uh, we're, we're keen. It's your club as members, guys uh, and ladies. And we're keen to, to work with you and make the Episcopal world a smaller place, as we always say. And we want to take your stuff on board. And it was nice Scott mentioned earlier on that, uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions for whiskies to nose and taste, let's do it. Uh, January, we're hoping for the membership. We start the direct debits. That will be coming up very shortly as well. And we can then ex ex extend up to a bit more expensive whiskies. Because, yes, I think it is a great way we do it. 50 mils. You know, 25 quid for three different whiskies, three 25 mils that you'll not yeah. buy in the supermarket. Yeah. You'll, you'll have to rake for days in the, some of the whiskey shops and not even find them there. So that's us. So next Friday, members only exclusive. If you want to be part of that, get your 25 pound over the weekend, and get joined in and we'll get your membership cards and your packs out to you very, very shortly. And if it's a Christmas present you're looking to buy, what better Christmas present than seeing Blakey and I on Christmas morning on a video? Ooh. A real surprise one. That will make end with this Christmas. I'd pay twice sure. as much. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, Christmas presents, we're doing that. I think, Gregors, could you confirm the online shop? I know Gregors and I were working this week. Online shop, we've got the Glencairn glasses for sale. Uh, we've got some whiskies coming on online in the next day or two, hopefully as well, by the early next week. So if you want to buy a bottle of whiskey, and it, most of them is the stuff we've actually tasted here. Mm -hmm. you know. So again, it's unusual. You, you'll not get them all, all over the place. And I can tell you, because I was comparing prices with Master and Malt when I was pricing them, <laughs> that'd be half of them are actually out of stock with Master and Malt. So, you know, they're pretty exclusive uh, to, to purchase from there. Uh, Staves, we've got a, a company, a guy in the tour industry with myself, in struggling, so he's making some staves. So we're, we're selling names, so a nice wee Christmas present. The, the cut out, you can sit your blanket and glass into it. A handle you can carry it about, and you can buy one of them for three glasses and buy the three Glencairn glasses in a fantastic Christmas present. And all from the comfort of your own home and safety. You can do it all online. Ab absolutely. I kind of do that. I get my youngest daughter to do everything online. <laughs> <laughs> I'm useless to that. But uh, anyway, folks, absolutely fantastic. Scott, great having you on board today. And, and we'll, we'll make sit down and have a more chat because the, the mystique of the... The, the let's cast. go. Let's go and have a chat. Let's go have a chat. So, no. Twi There's been a few guys dialing in for the first time, so just a warm welcome. Thank you for that. Uh, you have done a grand job. Thanks for stopping in there, Scott. So, uh, boys, anything else we're going to say? No, no. Scott, stopping in here. You're barred. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slange. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> What are we going to say? Slange. 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 So about timing, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>